Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to explore how to fix edge and color issues with your videos when using the chroma key tool in Pop Video. So I'm going to explore a couple of different scenarios, uh, each with their own issues, and we'll talk about how you can use the various parameters to fix those. So let's go ahead and import in our first project, our first example here. Let's go to Import File, and I'm going to find that file that I want to import in here, uh, in the Export folder. Let's go to this one right here with our graduates, the number of graduates just tossing their caps into the air here. So you can see that we have a nice slow motion video. What I want to do is remove the background there and replace it with something else. So let's go ahead and use our chroma key tool over here under the edit tab. And the first thing we need to do is choose a mask color. Um, but first notice that the background here is not a uniform color. It's more of a gradient. So we have a lighter blue, a lighter shade of blue at the bottom and it kind of gradually moves to a darker shade of blue at the top. Uh, this will create uh, issues in certain cases. Let's go ahead and test this out. Let's choose a mask color uh, with our color picker here. I'm going to choose something in the middle. And you can see that pretty accurately uh, takes out the background, even though it was a gradient. However, let's take a look at the color similarity slider, and I'll show you how this affects your uh, composition here. So if we move that color similarity slider down, Notice that we're restoring more and more of the original background because the uh, color similarity slider, if it has a lower value, it's becoming more picky about what it masks out. However, if it has a higher value, it's going to expand the range of shades that it's able to uh, mask out. So we can take that to like even a level of 70. Looks like everything is covered. And you can see if we go into mask mode here, uh, you can also use the two hot key there. Um, if we change our color similarity down, you'll see the mask slowly creeping in the bottom there as well. So they're kind of drowning in a uh, mask ocean there. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, bring that back up to a value of uh, 70 or so, and that should fix the issue. We can also clean up their outlines a little bit by uh, using the matte white slider in the mask settings. And we'll talk about this in more detail in the next example here. But I can take that matte white up to like, you know, a value of 17. And it cleans it up nicely. And then we can go back to uh, transparent video mode and give her a playback. And everyone's celebrating. Hooray, successful masking. All right. And if we go to our uh, background options, we can choose a nice custom background color, like this uh, professional looking uh, green here, forest green. I'm not sure what kind of green you would call this. But there's our uh, example right there. And Everything looks pretty clean, so I think that's a success. Let's move on to our next example. Let's change back to a chessboard background, and we'll go here to a uh, new project. We don't need to save this one, and import our second example. Let's go to uh, this video over here of a girl with a microphone in front of a nice uniform green screen. This one is no longer a gradient, so this is ideally what you'd want. But let's go ahead and try and chroma key this one, and we'll come across a couple issues. So if we select chroma key, it removes the background quite nicely automatically in this case. However, there's three different things that we want to uh, refine here. The first is we see a little bit of a green color along the uh, edge of her hair, a little bit of a green halo, which we want to get rid of. The second is the checkerboard pattern is kind of showing through her sweater, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. And the third is that we have sort of a, a gray outline uh, that's kind of pixelated around the edge, and we want to kind of refine that. So let's address the first one, which is the green outline on her hair, and that can be adjusted using the color similarity slider. Again, so doing the same thing, kind of decreasing the color similarity just to a value of like 86, we'll pretty much get rid of that green halo and restore the original color. And let's take a look now at the checkerboard pattern on her sweater. Now, again, that can be fixed using the matte white, and I'll show you this time in mask mode here. Uh, you can see the result right here uh, from our original chroma key. Not very good in this case. So let's choose our matte white slider and let's pump it up a little bit until we get rid of all those artifacts in the middle of the uh, shadow right there. And I think that's pretty good. We've gotten rid of all that. And let's take a look at it in transparent video mode. Boom. So now we have the original color right there. Now, with edge restoration, uh, let's take a look at the edge. So the outline of our character or the edge of our mask, if we use our edge restoration slider, we can kind of reduce that. We can take it down a little bit. Uh, let's take it down to about uh, 72. Now, I'm showing you the wrong way to do this first because uh, I'm going to show you why in a sec. 
Uh, if we take the edge restoration down, sure, it gets rid of the outline. It looks a lot cleaner. But the recommended way to do that is actually to use our mask settings down here. So I've already, you know, maximized my matte white as much as I want to in this case. We can actually counteract, we can get rid of more of that outline by using our matte black. Um, so matte black will kind of expand the black area of your mask. You can see it slowly, slowly dissipate right there. Um, if I show you in uh, mask mode here, it may be a little bit easier to see. You can see we slowly, slowly, slowly reduce. Actually, it's probably easier to see in uh, transparent video mode because you can see the edge details a bit better. So right there, again, adding more. It's a very, very subtle change, but it's often I often use the matte black and matte white in combination to refine my edges as opposed to our edge restoration tool. And now, you know, we've done a fairly decent job here. Uh, let's probably take that mask black a little bit down further. We don't want to get rid of that much of our original material. The value of like 70 would do. Um, but now we want to kind of, uh, it's a little bit choppy and edgy. So it won't look good when we composite it onto another video. So let's go ahead and blur out our mask here. We're going to use mask blur. And I'm going to use the clicker tool here. So kind of create a nice blur here. A value of three or four would do. And that blurs out the edge nicely. So it kind of, you know, fades into the background a little bit better. And if we find that this blur is, you know, too thick, like it is right now, we can use the mask expand to kind of narrow that right there. So mask expand of like a, you know, negative uh, two or something like that. We can probably take that blur down a little bit, get a bit of a sharper edge there. I think something like that looks fine. And we get a nice clean edge right there. And everything's looking good. So let's go ahead and play back right now. Now when I play back, notice her right elbow, uh, especially there's sort of like a weird kind of uh, thing going on with her uh, right elbow. And that's because at the beginning, we took our edge restoration. We used edge, edge restoration to try to get rid of that black outline before we use the mask settings. Um, and that can cause an issue because if we go to, I think it's uh, somewhere, let's go to a frame where you can see a problem right there. Um, maybe something like, uh, there we go, right there. Um, stop. Okay, so her elbow there is having a little bit of an issue. The um, the mask is kind of tearing at the edge. If you go to mask mode, you can see right there, obviously, there's some tearing, and we need to get that fixed. So let's take our edge restoration, and let's pump that up to 100. And you can see now we are restoring more of the original material. If we take it back down to, uh, you know, 60, and we go into transparent video mode, take a look in this mode as well. Edge restoration. We're getting more of the original data right there. And a value of 100 looks fine and dandy. So I think that can be considered a success. Now if we press F3, notice because we did this at frame 32 we're at right now, if I go to the frame before this, it's going to, you know, maintain the old values for edge restoration. And this keyframe here onwards is where we have those newer values. So from here, from frame 0 to, to frame 32, it's going to look like this. So what we can do to fix that is we can right click on our keyframe in key settings and select set as global key. And that'll apply that change to the entire timeline. So we just select yes to continue. And now we have that issue fixed on uh, from frame one all the way down. All right. So that's another way to uh, make sure that you, um, you know, don't have those sort of weird edges going on. Uh, the mask, uh, mask tearing anyways. Edge restoration can fix that. Uh, so make sure you have that value at a reasonable level. We can go ahead and try and add a background in. Here's our nice custom professional green background and our singer in front of our beautiful, beautiful forest green background. All right, so that's that example. Let's take a look at one final one here. Let's start a new project. And I'm going to load in a video of an eagle. The beautiful eagle right here, beautiful bald eagle. Um, what we're going to do is go back to chessboard background for now. And in the edit mode, we're going to go to chroma key and quickly select our mask color, select the background and get that out of there. Now, in this case, we don't need to worry too much about color similarity. It's not going to have much of an effect. Uh, we can t keep it at a value of about 25 right there. Um, what we do want to do is try to retain as much of the uh, feathering, the edge detail as possible. 
So notice that if we zoom in, we have, you know, sort of this uh, kind of pixelated uh, outline right here. And we want to try to avoid that. Uh, we're going to keep the edge restoration where it is because there's no real tearing going on. Um, we can also take the, uh, the halo correction. Uh, we're not going to use it too much. Uh, halo correction is used to desaturate the edge to remove minor uh, green or blue halos. If you have a green or blue outline halo on your subject, uh, you can often use that. Transparency as well. Uh, we normally use it for uh, uh, you know, semi-transparent surfaces such as hair and glass. Uh, it's not going to be applicable in this situation. Uh, but spill threshold. Uh, spill threshold is used to kind of refine the edge of the mask. So if I take the spill threshold value up right here, notice that we're going to restore more of our original video. It's kind of easier to see this when you use it in alpha mode or in mask mode here. All right, so let's change to mask mode. Notice all this detail right here. Um, it's, our alpha mask doesn't look too clean. So let's go ahead and take the spill threshold and see what it does here. Basically, it's refining that edge and creating a nice sharper edge. So we want to take our spill threshold up to a value of like, you know, uh, what's that? 105 right now is fine. I think we have restored most of the edge that we want to restore and we've uh, refined that edge nicely. Now let's go back to our transparent video. The next item we want to do is we want to um, refine this edge again. And this is where our mask setting come in handy again with the blur and everything. So let's try our mask weight. First of all, mask weight, we're going to change it up to a, a higher value here just to restore as much of that uh, original data as possible, original video as possible. And then we'll balance it out with our matte black. So our matte black in this case, we can pump that up. We kind of get the sharper, sharper look right there. I think that's looking okay. And then we can, again, blur that a little bit. So let's blur it to maybe a value of uh, two, three, four. It's a little bit blurred. We can probably balance that out by decreasing our mask expand. There we go. I think that looks nice and clean and sharp right there. Again, this is too sharp, obviously, so you probably want to blur it to a level of about two. I think this one looks the most accurate. So there we go. We have a nice uh, outline of an eagle and we can go to our background options and I have an active image prepared that I can choose instead of our custom background. Let's choose this active image and we can see the beautiful bald eagle in its natural habitat. Although the lighting is obviously a little bit different, uh, you may want to refine that, but uh, we can play back and we can see our eagle in its natural habitat again, just looking around for prey. It looks like you are the prey. But anyways, that's about it uh, for this tutorial, guys. I just wanted to show you kind of a couple of examples of how you can refine edges, uh, fix color issues uh, in your backgrounds. Um, the color similarity slider, obviously, one of the more important ones and your mask setting sliders down here, as well as edge restoration, spill threshold, very commonly used in a lot of cases. And so now you know how to use them if you ever come across those issues. Uh, again, each video will be different, uh, unique, and you'll have to use a different combination of values uh, to fix the issues, but uh, hopefully get through it, and hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. Uh, so thanks so much for watching, and check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.